Yeah, this is serious. This is serious because I went on the Brown show. He's giving me all this type of stuff about we're just going to have a discussion and blah, blah, blah. A conversation. We'll be, we'll be polite. We'll be polite. And so I get on the discussion. We do the show. And then the next thing he's calling me a Christian anti-Semite. Ah, would you like to know the truth, the whole truth? Can we put it on the table? For Dr. E. Michael Jones, Owen Benjamin, and their friends and followers to see. Here's what happened. Let me give you the facts and nothing but the facts. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 13, 8, we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. All right. Here's the email that I sent to Dr. Jones after I found out from my team he was willing to come on the air. Hello, Michael. Thanks so much for accepting my invitation to join me on the air to discuss some of our strongly different perspectives on the Jewish people. I want to assure you that I will be respectful of your scholarship and will not try to ambush you. And I want to encourage you to be absolutely forthright in stating your views without pulling any punches as I plan to be on my side. If we believe the other is seriously wrong on any point, let us say so plainly. Now, I don't know how I could have been any more clear, any more direct. And, and the email goes on after that. I explain where I agree with some of his points, where I strongly differ. And the whole point is, let's put our differences on the table. And Dr. Jones now, Dr. Jones is, is upset that I'm referring to him as a Christian anti-Semite. Well, Here's here's what happens on the show. He lays out his initial position, where he stands, how he defines anti-Semitism, why he doesn't classify himself as an anti-Semite. And here's my response to him on the show this very day that he refers to. Let's listen. What I would want to challenge and push back on it and then get your response to is the idea that anti-Semitism to be valid has to be racial. To me, if you demonize a people as a whole, if you can speak about the Jews and the Jews, whether it's by nature or by religion or by a freak of historical development, the Jews as a whole are kind of demonized and spoken of in a certain way. There is a Jewish problem. Then to me, that becomes anti-Semitic. Now, now there are stereotypes. Now there are exaggerations. Now you're painting with too broad a brush. Encyclopedia Britannica describes anti-Semitism as hostility toward or discrimination against Jews as a religious or racial group. And, and what, I've, what I've often heard and seen is people talk about the Jews, the Jews, as if it is this monolithic group and the Jews are responsible for all these evils in the world. I was gracious in how I said it, but what I'm telling Dr. Jones in my very first exchange on the show that we spoke of and a show afterwards, he emailed me, said he enjoyed the conversation at the end of the show. He said he enjoyed it. Glad we had the conversation right off the bat. I'm telling him his position is anti-Semitic. What he did, the rest of the broadcast, the entire rest of the broadcast fit into that exact description of anti-Semitism that I put out at the beginning. Criticizing Jews is not being anti-Semitic. Saying that I know Jewish people like this or like this, that's bad. This is bad. This is wrong. So many liberal Jews on the wrong side of social issues. Israel's wrong here. That's not anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is when you demonize the Jews, when you speak about all the evils that the Jews are responsible for, when you demonize and stereotype the people as a people, that's classic anti-Semitism. And right out of the bat, that's what I told Dr. Jones he was doing. Why? Is there any surprise? Why is it now being painted as if I did something duplicitous? Was that's out of the that gate? I said that. All right. Here's what Dr. Jones says now to Owen Benjamin. Christian, what, let, let's 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 work this out here. What is a Christian anti-Semite? Okay. First of all, I've repu I've re said repeatedly. You can go on all these shows. No, I've said no one has the right to harm the Jew. All right. Just because you say no one has the right to harm the Jew doesn't mean you're not an anti-Semite. Who says anti-Semitism is only wanting to physically harm Jews? You know, words can harm and lies can harm and misinformation can harm as well. You watch the entire video, our, our exchange back and forth. It was gracious and respectful as promised. 
But the idea that I'm being duplicitous now by saying he's a Christian anti-Semite, that was the whole point during the show. Here, l- listen to what I say to him. Listen to this interaction. So would you say that Jews, by, by nature as a people, we're not saying biology, but by spiritual nature, are by nature subversive people and by nature hostile to all mankind? I am saying that, yes, yes, I am that's saying not, that. That's not evil? Being hostile to all mankind and subversive is not evil? Okay, there I'm confronting him about his anti-Semitic position, and there he is affirming his anti-Semitic position. The way he defines anti-Semitism, that it has to be racial only, or it has to, you have to want to harm the Jews, that's his definition. That is not a working contemporary definition of anti-Semitism, and it's clear I told him that's not what I was referring to. So here he's saying Jews by nature, whatever the reason, spiritual nature, whatever, Jews by nature are hostile to all men, displeasing to God. That's anti-Semitism. All right, so here he's going to, again, during our discussion, during the debate, he's going to justify his position. First of all, I have to say that because St. Paul said it. He said the Jews are enemies of the entire human race. They are. The question is, why are they enemies of the entire human race? Because they killed Christ, and in killing Christ, they rejected Logos. And when you reject Logos, you become a revolutionary. And that's what Jews have been for 2,000 years. What's fascinating is it's one of the tenets of traditional Judaism not to rebel against the countries where you were subservient. So as you will look century after century, as Jews have been scattered in country after country, traditional Jews have not worked to overthrow governments and rebel. And and those that have been cultural revolutionaries have been the ones who have broken away from traditional Judaism. At the end of the show, Dr. Jones said that, well, traditional Jews, by affirming Torah, by affirming the Old Testament, that they are affirming Logos in a certain sense. So, so again, when you say the Jews, you are now demonizing an entire group of people and speaking wrongly of an entire group of people and even making the assumption that every Jew at a certain point in his life actually thinks through who Jesus is and why they're going to reject him as if they're crucifying him afresh, as opposed to the fact that most Jews are never even confronted with the truth about the gospel during their lifetimes. All right. So now Dr. Jones, back to his time with Owen Benjamin, is going to explain what I did that was so wrong when he quoted First Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's watch. He comes on and he starts saying, no, no, that's wrong. First of all, you can't use the word Jew because there's no such thing as the word Jew, and they didn't use the word Jew because if you go back to the King James Version, which is, of course, the version that Jesus Christ himself wrote since he spoke English, the King James Version says Jew- Judeans. Well, Wait a minute. Judeans is not the word. I looked it up in the Greek. It's it's hoi yudeoi. It's Greek. That's the original word. It's it's Jew. That's what that word means. Right. So what, what we're seeing here now is with Christian anti-Semitism, what this means basically is that his reading of the gospel is normative. And if you disagree with his cockamamie, crazy reading of 1 Thessalonians 2, based on an archaic translation, he will call you a Christian anti-Semite, which means you're responsible for the shooting in California. What you just got there was a litany of, I don't want to say lies, I'm going to assume Dr. Jones just didn't listen rightly, but a ton of misinformation in about a minute. Uh, Owen Benjamin, if you want the truth, Let me set the record straight. Number one, I did not say there's no such word as the Jews in Greek. I said that Greek scholars and New Testament scholars recognize there are different ways the word is used. Sometimes it means Jews. Sometimes it specifically is referring to Jews in Judea. And sometimes it refers to Jewish leaders. When I offered to cite scholars that held to that view, including top Catholic scholars, Dr. Jones's response was, well, I don't really trust scholarship because I was once kicked out of a, of a university. I was fired from a university. So you're going to dismiss all the fine scholarship that's in the world because you had a bad experience in a university. And then we're supposed to turn around and, and trust your scholarship. What kind of nonsense is that? That's the first thing. Second thing, I did not quote the King James. I quoted the new King James. And I quoted the new King James that says Judeans because it's a conservative translation. It's not an avant-garde creative translation trying to forge new ground. It's a conservative translation. Yet here, I'm looking at the Greek in front of me. All right. So Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2.14 that we suffered 
from the churches, the congregations in Udaya, right? Udaya in Greek. And the same thing now is being, we're suffering from the Udayans, okay? Udayon, the exact same word. We suffered from the people in Judea, all right? And, and this is what's happening from the Judeans. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I could have quoted the contemporary English version. I could have quoted the Tree of Life translation. I could have quoted the Stern New Testament. I could have quoted others that also said Judeans. But in context, Paul's saying that there has been a history among the Jewish people, not all the Jewish people, but there's been a history among the Jewish people, especially the leaders. They rejected the prophets. They rejected Jesus. They're rejecting us. They're hostile to all men. They don't please God. He's talking about a certain group of people within the Jews. Here, let, let me, and, and, and I took issue with him saying that in the gospel of John always means Jews, 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 Jews. Well, sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Here's what Catholic scholar Urban C. von Valde said. He's talking about the polemic between Jewish leaders and Jesus in the gospel of, of John. He says this, even the instances with the most hostile connotations are used in a way that is intended to refer to religious authorities rather than the entire nation. This is a respected Catholic scholar on John. Here, I've, I've got here volume one of the famous two-volume commentary by Catholic scholar Raymond E. Brown, one of the most respected commentaries on the Gospel of John by one of the most respected Catholic biblical scholars of the last generation, all right? Here's what he says about the usage of the term Jews in John's Gospel. And remember, I'm told this is cockamamie. Dr. Jones throws out scholarship because he got kicked out of a university. He was fired from a university. And my view is cockamamie. Mainstream scholarship here, respected biblical and Greek scholarship. Brown says this, the polemic attitude of the fourth gospel towards Judaism is seen in the use of the term the Jews, which occurs 70 times in John as compared with five or six occurrences in each synoptic gospel. He says, for instance, when Jesus is speaking to a foreigner as to the Samaritan in John 4.22, he uses the Jews as no more than a religious nationalistic designation where he says salvation is from the Jews. And passages that speak of the feasts or the customs of the Jews, there may be nothing opprobrious in the use of the term. So nothing negative is a feast of the Jews. Moreover, there is one stratum of Johannine material, particularly evident in chapters 9 through 12, where the term the Jews simply refers to Judeans and thus covers both Jesus's enemies and those who believe in him. This is Dr. Raymond E. Jones, uh, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> this, this is Dr. Raymond Brown. All right. Remember, Dr. Jones, who's not a biblical scholar or a Greek scholar, calls this cockamamie, one of the world's most, I think, the most respected scripture scholar in the Catholic Church in the last generation. He differs. And all I was doing was referring to scholarship. Yet, to the followers of Benjamin and Jones, I'm the crazy one dreaming up these crazy theories. I'm just trying to be faithful to the text and, and, and open up what we understand to be the best reading of the text. So he says this. Leaving aside these exceptions, some of which are obvious, others of which are explicable in terms of literary criticism, the fourth gospel uses the Jews as almost a technical title for, in italics, the religious authorities, particularly those in Jerusalem who are hostile to Jesus. It's not talking about the Jews as a whole, but rather the Jerusalem religious authorities. That's where the battle was. And as I pointed out to Dr. Jones in our interview, the people, the Jewish people as a whole, thought that Jesus was a prophet. That's why he had to be taken stealthily because the crowds believed in him. And that's why so many thousands of Jews ended up following him after his death and his resurrection. All right. <clears throat> what, about, what about this idea that Dr. Jones is responsible for the synagogue shooting in Poway, California, or Owen Benjamin is? No, no, the shooter is responsible. The shooter is responsible. But I warned on the show, we'll play the clip in a moment. I warned on the show. And when I critiqued Owen Benjamin's rhetoric and other rhetoric from, from Christians attacking, quote, the Jews, that rhetoric like that is dangerous and can lead to violence. I said this before the synagogue shooting. I'll say it after the synagogue shooting. And I did not connect Dr. Jones's rhetoric to the synagogue shooting because they both quoted from the New Testament. No, it's because basically the talking points in the Shooter's Manifesto could have come right out of several of Dr. Jones's books. Here, let me, let me read some quotes from the Shooter's Manifesto. Every Jew is responsible 
for the meticulously planned genocide of the European race. They act as a unit, and every Jew plays his part to enslave the other races around him, whether consciously or subconsciously. I mean, this sounds like E. Michael Jones. Their crimes are endless. For lying and deceiving the public through their exorbitant role in news media, for using usury and banks to enslave nations in debt and control all finances for the purpose of funding evil, for their role in starting wars on a foundation of lies which have cost millions of lives throughout history, a foundation of lies which have cost millions of lives through history. Remember, every Jew is responsible for their role in cultural Marxism and communism, for pushing degenerate propaganda in the form of entertainment, for their role in feminism, which has enslaved women in sin, for causing many to fall into sin with their role in peddling pornography, for their role in voting for and funding politicians and organizations who use mass immigration to displace the European race, for their large role in every slave trade for the past 2,000 years, for promoting race mixing, for their cruel and bloody history of genocidal behavior, for their persecution of Christians of old, for their role in the murder of the Son of Man, that is the Christ. Every Jew, young and old, has contributed to these. For these crimes, they deserve nothing but hell. I will send them there. Okay, so Dr. Jones says don't harm them, and I'm warning him that his kind of rhetoric leads to harm, that his kind of rhetoric leads to bloodshed. It has through history. I warned him about it on the radio. I urged him to modify his rhetoric, and he said, thanks for your advice, but I have to say what I'm saying. This is what it leads to. Yes, the synagogue shooter alone is responsible for his actions, but those who provoke this type of animosity to the Jews, they need to do some soul searching. All right, so Owen Benjamin, he's not happy with what I had to say, so here's where he chimes in. Don't harm the Jew because they'll complain about it for another thousand years. Like, there's still, <laughs> there's still about the pharaohs. What do you think happens if you hit them? You know, treat them like a woman. Never strike them. Just avoid, get strong. You know, don't go with the tricks. If you hit them, they will complain for a millennia. That, that, that's how you empower a victim is you hit them. Oh, oh, okay, so listen. What happened with the pharaohs is not the issue. What, what happened wiping out two-thirds of European Jewry 70 years ago, that's, that's an issue. That's, that's, that remains an issue. And with the synagogue shootings and, and with the attacks on Jews in France and other countries, that, that's an issue. But here, let me set the record straight. I got five volumes here, five, over 1,500 pages that I wrote differing with my Jewish people. Five volumes answering Jewish objections to Jesus, where page after page after page, I say why I differ with my Jewish community, why I believe the rabbis are wrong. I've, I've got a whole volume, over 300 pages, the last volume of the series where I differ with Talmudic authority, where I differ with rabbinic authority, where I say where I, I take issue with my Jewish people, all right? I, I, I have in another one of my books, and, and in, in these books as well, I say one of the reasons that Jewish people have suffered over the last 2,000 years, one of the reasons is that we rejected Jesus and came under divine judgment. That's considered to be a hateful thing. I say these things freely. I, I differ with my Jewish people constantly. I, I speak against the, the role of Jewish atheists. I speak against the role of Jewish leaders in the SPLC and the ACLU and these other liberal causes, et cetera, and, and, and J Jewish activists in Israel going in a wrong social direction all the time without the least problem. And I reject and stand against anti-Semitism. So look, you got to caricature me a certain way to make me fit your narrative, but it doesn't work. Uh, Owen, that's not who I am. I'll gladly talk to you off the air or face to face or on your YouTube channel. You come on my radio show. Let's talk in a civil way because there's been a caricature painted of me and it has to be because otherwise you're going to have to recognize we're doing something wrong. All right. More from Owen Benjamin. Yeah, and we'll be cellmates because Michael Brown in that discussion with you by the end took a shot at me and was like, yeah. I, I, I put up a video crit criticizing the hateful anti-Semite comedy of Owen Benjamin and I had to disable the comments because... All his, all his uh, right-wing Nazis came out in droves. I'm like, oh, you mean just normal people? Normal people defended me and said that you shouldn't slander me? And, that, and then, so then the, the, the Jewish revolutionary spirit, the Pharisees, whatever you want to call them, there's a spectrum of morality in the Jewish population, but the way that that guy thinks is if, he, if you let him sleep on your couch and he steals from you and rapes your wife and you kick him out, it's because you hate Jews. All right, so here's the test. Owen Benjamin, do you care about truth? Because that's not who I am, that's not how I think, that's not how I operate. 
as I just told you, I have no problem criticizing Jewish people as a Jewish follower of Jesus myself. This is in-house. I have no problem talking about our weaknesses along with our strengths. No problem whatsoever. No, listen, I went to a conference in Palestine last year, the only pro-Israel speaker at a pro-Palestinian conference, specifically to sit and talk and let people share their issues with me so we could have honest interaction. And I said, listen, to the extent I can stand up for you where I feel you're being wrong, I'll do it. I have no problem criticizing Jewish people. I have a problem with anti-Semitism. And, and Owen, your rhetoric is dangerous. It's, it's reckless. That you, you may say one modifying point here. You say, well, I said these Nazi followers. I didn't call them Nazis. But yeah, we did disable comments. here. here. But you want to know why we disabled the comments? Here, here. And let, let, me, let me read the ones I can read. Okay, these are the more civil bad ones. How about this? You all are not Semites. Jews are a problem. Always have been. Fake Jews are parasites. Remember the Nazi view, Jews are parasites. What do you do with parasites? You exterminate them. Rotten hell, you false prophet. You hater of God. You Judaizer. Why do you think they got kicked out of 109 countries in the first place? Yeah, it's like a black kid in all white schools getting kicked out of the schools and it's the black kid's fault. How about this? You're of your father, the devil. Everything comes out of your mouth is a lie. You are a serpent, antichrist, son of a whore. So I've been preaching Jesus around the world for over 47 years now as the only savior for Jew and Gentile because I expose anti-Semitism. I'm now an antichrist, son of a whore. <clears throat> How about this? People are waking up. The 110th country is about to manifest itself, manifest itself. In other words, Jews are going to get kicked out of America. Yeah, these are just the lovely followers of Owen Benjamin who differed with me. How about this? Where's the meltdown? Because I said he had an anti-Semitic meltdown. 9-11 was Mossad. Ah, so, so 9-11 that, that killed my brother-in-law, Jewish, by the way, that, that killed him in the World Trade Center. That was Mossad. This is reasonable people. Gracious, reasonable people who differ with me because I quote slandered Owen Benjamin. How about this? The Bears would like to encourage you to try to separate your head from your rectum, wizard. Also, stop subverting the mustache. You don't get it. Yeah, so just lovely, friendly guys, nice guys, good spirited guys. And these are the ones we can print. These, these are the ones that are at least decent enough to print. Uh, look at the sunken pits under the eyes. Ask Dr. Brown is infested with devils and profanes the mustache. What's the profaning the mustache thing? Where in the world is that coming from? But by the way, I don't mind getting attacked like this. I get attacked like this day and night for the gospel and for truth. That doesn't concern me in the least. It comes with being a public person online and radio, whatever. That that's, goes with the territory. All, I'm, all I, I want you to see is the level of rhetoric when I challenge anti-Semitism. How, how about this? I'm not an anti-Semite. I'm a foreskin supremacist. Oh, yeah. Bring in the supremacist language as well. Lovely. Delightful. So, so listen, Dr. Jones, you have seriously disqualified yourself in my eyes in terms of wanting truth. I give you truthful scholarship. You reject it as cockamamie. I say forthrightly on the show that your position is anti-Semitic. And now you're upset that afterwards I call you a Christian anti-Semite. I, I, I deceived you somehow. And, and Owen, you, you think I'm being unfair to you? you? Look at the video I did. Look at the clips that we played. Those clips are dangerous. You flip the table, flip the money tables of the Jews. Over. Flip them over. Well, you can say two minutes later, don't get violent. But people hear these things. There are a lot of unstable people out there. We've got to be responsible. So this is what I said at the end of the, the show with Dr. Jones. This is what I said. And there's a reason for my concern. Listen, rhetoric of the Jews, the Jewish problem, the broad brush statements that you're making are not part of a solution, but only exacerbate the problem, only lead to Jew hatred. And ultimately, as much as you could say we shouldn't be violent or harm people, it does lead to harm. We've seen it through the centuries. And we've seen it in the synagogue shooting using the very rhetoric that comes from the pen of Dr. Jones and others. The shooter alone is responsible for his actions. Others need to ask, have I contributed to that attitude of hostility? You know, might say, oh, I'm just a comedian and just having fun on the internet. Well, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. And Owen, it seems to me that you're, you're pretty passionate about some of these things you say. And Dr. Jones, you certainly believe them passionately. And when I urged you with those very words, 
please be more circumspect in what do you say. No, you double down, and you're going to blame me. Okay, so friends, now you know the truth. So it's a real simple choice. Are you going to follow the truth, the evidence? You, you may differ with my overall positions, but you've been hoodwinked on that video as Dr. Jones and Owen Benjamin spoke. You've been hoodwinked, friends. I've given you the truth. I presented it. Go back. Watch the dialogue with Dr. Jones. Look at my critique of Owen Benjamin. And I'm happy to continue this dialogue. Dr. Jones, I'm happy to have a formal moderated debate, uh, an academic debate with formal moderation and cross-examination. Well, let's, let's do it. Let's schedule it. Let's set it up for, for two or three hours. Let me challenge your viewpoints about, quote, the Jews. Oh, and I'm happy to come on your YouTube channel, you on mine, or talk to you privately. I want to help, not hurt. Yes, Jews can be criticized. Yes, Israel can be criticized, but I will call out anti-Semitism to my last breath.